Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is the uh, Oracle Autonomous Database Learning Lounge. I'm Marcos Anasivia, part of the product management team for uh, Autonomous Database. And today we're going to have a very, very cool session on basically everything that we announced at uh, Cloud World, right? So we're going to do that in three parts. The first part is going to focus on multi-cloud, so all the multi-cloud announcements and capabilities and new things that uh, we announced. Then on the second part, we're going to be basically talking about the AI-centric, you know, generative development infrastructure for developers or for the enterprises, right, what, that uh, we uh, call now GenDev. And then we're going to be actually focusing on the new capabilities for developers, right? So all this stuff uh, related to, uh, you know, autonomous database for developers. We announced uh, synthetic data uh, generation, GPU enablement for different things, capabilities for Onyx, right, in database. So um, we're going to be uh, focusing on that, right? Uh, so before we begin, I'll ask you guys to please, if you have questions, type them in the Q&A, okay? So Zoom has the Q&A there, if you can type your question there, uh, we're going to appreciate it. And then uh, product managers are monitoring that, so we're going to be able to answer any questions you have. Now, um, I will share the links in chat, right? So any links that we share is going to be on the Zoom chat, right? Uh, we're going to be making this recording available uh, at that link that you guys see there in the screen. And uh, speaking of links, um, I'm going to be distributing these links right now uh, in chat. So if you took, take a look at the chat now, uh, you're going to see that uh, I'm putting there all the links related to our main site for Autonomous Database, how to you know join us on social, but also how to ask your question offline, right? So you can ask your question this session, but also online, right? So uh, both on Stack Overflow and also on uh, our, our developers uh, um, workspace, right? So we have a developers Slack workspace there that is related to the Oracle developers. And you can just go there. There's an Oracle Autonomous Database uh, channel there, and you can push your question there and, and, and we're gonna be happy to answer, all right? All right, so um, so um, that's basically it. Without further ado, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, open up uh, the, the session. We're going to bring Marty Gubar and Keith Laker um, and myself at the end. Uh, we're going to be working on and talking about the different topics and the different events. So, uh, Marty, I'll stop uh, sharing my screen, and uh, you can start sharing on your side, right? And thank you again for, for doing the session with us. Okay. So, hey, everybody. Um, really excited to, to start this session with you. There's so much to talk about. I'm moving on. I'm here with Keith. Uh, Keith and I are going to be doing a lot of the talk. You know, Keith and I have been working, what, 25 years together now, Keith? I, yeah. I think this is the first time we've actually presented in this way. So it's kind of kind of exciting. I'm really, really psyched. Um, so, Keith. Why don't you kick it off and give us a quick, some of the, the that quick <laughs> recap. Okay, so our first session together and my first time of ever using remote control on Zoom. Yeah, I'm sure this will ah, go well. This is going to go smoothly. Smoothly, okay. no doubt. So I think Marcos has kind of hinted at the start of this, the, the three big things that we're going to pull out today um, that sort of went across so many different sessions uh, at Cloud World. Obviously, multi-cloud. This, this is kind of the the big message fr from Larry. Um, Gen Dev for the enterprise. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of the new features that we have pushed out that are using Gen Dev, uh, generative AI, etc. Extensions that we've made to some of the features that you. Uh, may be familiar with already having tried those uh, on autonomous database. And we're also for the gen dev aspects, there's a whole set of features that we've released to support the developers who are going to be working uh, on gen dev, on the generative AI capabilities. And we've got demos, et cetera, where we're going to bring out uh, those features. So um, you can. For some of the keynotes, you can watch those live. Well, watch the recordings uh, on YouTube. Um, there's three ones that we probably suggest you focus on. 
Uh, first, most important one, of course, is, is Larry's uh, vision and strategy. Um, important messages from Larry's that we pulled out is kind of the automation within ADB. And, and Larry brings this out uh, very clearly in aspects to things like data security um, and makes the point about the fact that Oracle now runs its business uh, on autonomous database. And for those of you that are running your workloads on Oracle Cloud using all the amazing services that we have on there, a lot of those cloud services underneath, uh, they're running autonomous databases. So you're probably already working with cloud services and experiencing the benefits of running on autonomous. And I love Larry's, one of his uh, key phrases that, that popped out was, you get all of these capabilities in autonomous and I'll let you watch the, uh, the video to get the full suite of everything that, that we offer, but you've got to be prepared to pay less and get more, which yeah. I think is- Awesome. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay, next bit. Uh, Juan Loiza, uh, keynote, covered the generative data development app dev frameworks. Um, and again, autonomous was in that. Uh, we're going to cover some of these aspects in here, but one's key theme was around the fact that ADB is the core building block for doing all of this generative development, for working with generative AI. And it's the building block because it comes without any limits. Infinitely functional, infinitely fast, infinitely available, and most importantly these days in the cloud, infinitely secure. The last session we've got for you to look at uh, comes from Karan uh, being interviewed on Oracle TV at Cloudworld, talking about multi-cloud uh, and the flexibility, et cetera, that you get. Um, and as he says during that interview, all the database innovations that we roll out, let's say you get 23 uh, AI as an example, it's available on day one on all these other clouds, which I think is is probably a very, very important message. So, Marty, where are we with Monty Cloud? Yeah, so let's take this last one first, right? You know, for autonomous database, as we all know, it was originally deployed on, on OCI, and it's been available for years, and it's had some really, really great uptake. And that's awesome. I think the, the big news, as Keith said, is we're, we're kind of going back to our roots, honestly. Like Oracle's always been known to run where you need it to run. And so now what we're going to do, and now what we do, is run across all the hyperscalers on Azure, on Google, coming to AWS, dedicated um, regions, right? So autonomous database runs wherever you need it to run. And the big announcement, or one of the big, well, we had multiple announcements, but the big release was actually with, with Google. Um, so we released, you can you can get started with Oracle Database at Google today, just like you can get started with Oracle Database at Azure today. Um, but I think the, the big thing that we've done here is, you know, Oracle, for Oracle Database, we're saying we're taking our best data management services and bringing them to the cloud, to those clouds, in this case, to Google, to Azure, right? And it's now co-located with all those application services, those innovative services provided by each of the cloud providers. So if you're using Gemini or you want to, you're, you, you're connecting to data lakes, all of that integration and all of that uh, is, is kind of built in. I mean, you know, if you think about it, ADB, has always been a multi-cloud database. It's always had all these abilities to reach out to other clouds, whether it's um, reaching out to their data lakes and importing or in integrating data sets, et cetera. Now it, it, it's co-located with those clouds. And we're gonna take a look at demos to see exactly what that means, right? So importantly for you, for customers, you can build better apps faster, more efficiently, at lower costs by bringing um, the autonomous database to your clouds where you're running your, your infrastructure. I, 
I mean, the opportunities are are vast, right? I mean, we look and and you know, we've heard from so many customers who are running. You know, there's thousands and thousands of customers running VMs on those clouds on IaaS, right? And we have this. You have an opportunity to make them run better, right? Make them run in a with a fully automated, fully managed service, right? So simpler to deploy, simpler to manage, simpler to use. So make those VMs run more efficiently, more easily, and faster. Now, again, we're bringing our best databases to these clouds. The same Oracle databases that you're running on-prem, you can now bring those databases to the cloud, right? And move and improve those workloads, right? It's the same Oracle database, but you can now you know, modernize those applications by integrating them with the core application services that are running on those clouds. So, you know, you come to Azure, come to Google, come to OCI, run the great new 23i AI features, and then take advantage of the cloud services that are available on each of those clouds to build better apps more easily. Um, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at what the experience is like. And um, what I'm going to say is that if you used autonomous database on um, OCI, this is going to look pretty familiar, right? In this case, we're actually running on Google, right? So you can do this today. So let's see what it takes to get started. What we're going to do is we're going to deploy a new autonomous database on Google. We're going to um, integrate new data sets right, where we have data that's on um, Google Cloud Storage, and then we're going to run natural language queries using Google's uh, Gemini model, right? So again, take advantage of Google services with autonomous database. So we're in Google Cloud, and the first thing we're going to do is going to go to Oracle or, or Oracle database at Google. You have the options for Exadata and ADB. And I'm going to create a new autonomous database. This should look really familiar, right? You know, interestingly, if you're familiar with OCI, this process should be familiar. If you're a Google customer, this will be very familiar, right? It's the same integrated, simple experience for deploying your databases. So I'm going to create a new database called Quick Start. I'm going to deploy it to the East region. I pick which type of database I want. In this case, I'll pick transaction processing. I'm going to run 23AI, use um, and deploy how much compute I want. Do I want to use auto scale, auto, auto scale for storage, auto scale for compute, add it to my network, um, specify you know, which subnet you want it to, to run on. You're done, right? In just a few minutes, you now have a fully automated database running on Google, right? And this is pretty awesome. And I connect to this database as I would any other Oracle database. Now, the beauty of it too, is that you get the best of Google and you get the best of Oracle, right? So now I'm shelling out to um, the OCI console from Google, right? And I can see now that I have things like all of those database actions. Right? So if I go into database actions and you know all of these capabilities that we have for monitoring your database, if you want to use Apex for building new apps, um, you know things like the SQL worksheet, all available to you. Here, I'm going to load new data from my data lake. So I'm just going to the data load UI. In this case, the data is in the Google Cloud Store. Right, So I have a private bucket on uh, Google Cloud Storage. I'm going to pull in my genres, my movies. Um, this happens to be a JSON collection, my streams, and load it. All right. So now, just as you that same experience you have on OCI, you can have that this similar experience on on Google. And if you want to use uh, Google services to to manage your data and load your data, you fine. You're, that's fine. So here's my genres. My genres loaded perfectly. That's awesome. Well, you know what? I want to now do uh, 
like, geez, I, I, what I would say is, you know, select star from it. That's so 2022, right? So let's now go into SQL CL, right? And here I'm going to use Gemini as my model. And I'm going to say, hey, what are our total streams? Oh, okay. I got my 25, you know, two and a half million streams. I'm going to break that out by genre. Well, not only am I going to break it up by genre, but I want to see it by customer segment too. I'm going to include the top five sorted by streams. I'm also going to include a rank, right? So use your language to answer these questions. Keith, where can they get some more info about this? Uh -huh. Yes. So as you probably know from Cloud World, we run lots and lots and lots of sessions. And very kindly, uh, all the presenters, Karen, Marty, and Dominic, have uploaded their presentations for you. Um, so we've put the links here uh, in the presentations. I don't know with Marcus whether we can quickly post those into the chat so people can get going now. Uh, if they're interested, that will take you straight into the content catalog. And you can see the presentations on our multi-cloud strategy and Marty and Dominic talking about autonomous database on Oracle database at Azure. Awesome. All right. Well, you know, that's, that's great. So here we have it. We, you know, we're able to integrate data or we're able to deploy autonomous database where you need it to run. How do you take advantage of it? Right. And uh, this is really from Juan Luis has introduced this new concept, this new model for development. And it's called generative development for the enterprise, right? Also known as gen dev. And this is Oracle's way of helping you build high value applications that leverage AI. It's mind blowingly powerful, really. And, you know, and I'm going to, you know, Juan said it was introduced in 23 AI. You know, Juan's great. I would argue that it was actually introduced earlier than that with, with 19C an autonomous database with the introduction of select AI. Honestly, it just got way better with 23 AI and, and all those great new capabilities. Because select AI, and we actually just took a look at it a second ago, which enabled you to do natural language queries, right? But it dramatically, select AI dramatically simplifies uh, the ability to apply AI to your data using SQL functions, using RAG, uh, using natural language, right? So, and it does all this while maintaining security and mitigating risks. So, you know, it's it's part of the database. You're only going to see the data that uh, you're supposed to see because it's going to apply Oracle database security rules, right? And so that's one of the big, big important factors when you're using GenDev. You know, I think uh, what is also incredible about GenDev is the ability to build apps quickly and to innovate at light speed, right? Using your language to build applications, whether it's asking for a recommendation, summarizing a support call, um, making predictions, right? It's kind of remarkable that, you know, these tasks that would have taken a long time to do, right? By oftentimes a domain expert is now much, much easier, right? You don't necessarily need to be a domain expert in in machine learning to do a prediction or to make a recommendation, right? So, you know, this ability to use your language to develop is in you know, I'm, I talk about this a lot and I'm always amazed about how powerful this is. Um, but frankly, you know, the speed with which you can build these apps is combined with the fact that we have a platform, right. That like, that makes it easy to develop upon. Right. So we've done all sorts of simplification, simplification in that platform. Keith, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Like why yeah, is why is autonomous database built for Gen Dev? <laughs> so I think you'll you'll hear uh, in the videos uh, that are online that where we're talking about Gen Dev, particularly the one, the one, the kind of the fundamental building block 
is the converged database. So that is the foundation for autonomous database. But by putting autonomous database at the heart of it, what do we get added onto it? And it's the full automation, the automation of all the data management tasks, which is where we get all of this incredible speed and ability to develop, uh, you know, the speed of thought that Marty's talking about. So we kind of wrap this up and autonomous database takes that converged uh, data model and wraps it around this full automation of the data management and most importantly, the built-in tools are helping you take advantage of all of those converged capabilities and doing that through generative AI, et cetera, and being able to drive some of these new, more sophisticated types of analytics, machine learning, being able to build more sophisticated apps um, and accelerate innovations. So it's automation and simplicity and everything that you need is built in, ready to go as soon as your database is deployed. That's kind of the big thing that Autonomous is bringing to GenDev. Yeah, it's like it is the it really is the perfect marriage. You know, the the thing that um, we're going to kind of jump into next is like in, in part of this area is like we've done a lot of work in data integration, right? And making it really simple to integrate uh, data sets, whether they're in, you know, multiple clouds, uh, multiple applications, um, in, you know, uh, in, in different types of formats, whether it's in Parquet or Iceberg or JSON or CF, it doesn't matter the, the data types or the storage, right? This is the cloud native capabilities that's been part of autonomous database for a really long time. And you can access that data that is in, you know, a third party database, either, um, uh, directly at query time or, or as part of an integration, loading loading the data. And if you're using things like a, a data lake and on, on Amazon and you're using Glue and you have all this metadata, take advantage of that, right? And automatic kind of autonomous database is able to leverage these data catalogs to fully automate many of these processes. The, uh, the other thing that, you know, where AI just kind of does change everything is, you know, what you, and you'll see this in some of the um, capabilities that we've just added in, into our data integration tools, right? And I'm just going to jump right into it. I mean, things like, ah, there's PII data in this data set, call that out and flag it. Um, do something with this unstructured data that's coming in, identify key phrases and identify sentiment. Right. So, you know, we're embedding AI into the process these themselves. So this is this is really what it looks like. I'm in Data Studio and I have uh, in this case, I'm connecting to a, an object store and I'm pulling in comment data uh, or uh, information that has comments in it, uh, along with different customer information. And, and immediately you can see on the bottom, it's flagged that, you know, there's PII data in this. So let's let's take a closer look at that. Right, and I'm going to examine the data that's being imported. As I scroll down, I can see that ah, you know, there's something called email, <laughs> um, and we may want to mask that. We may want to just maybe not pull it in. But I also want to derive like meaning from things like customer comments. How does the customer feel? What is their sentiment? Well, let's add an expression for sentiment. What are they talking about? Let's let's pull out their key phrases, right? So all of a sudden, I'm adding some structure to this unstructured data, right? So that way, I can do some more sophisticated analyses or more structured analyses of this data. I'm pulling it in. I've got my comments or my 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 data now uh, imported into the database. I've extracted things like key phrases, and here you can see it, right? So I have uh, on the bottom here. You can see that I have the comments comment. Comedies always make me laugh. That's a positive. Frequent updates with the new content keeps things fresh. Another good positive. So we have all these great, you know, 
this great feedback, but let's look at this at a more aggregate level. Let's look by my key phrases, what's the sentiment? And it turns out that, you know, it's not all great, right? There's been a lot of feedback, negative feedback on our app. There's also been some negative feedback, a fair amount of negative feedback on our on our feature set. Lots of good feedback. You know, there's so there's, you know, there's this ability to say, I want to, you know, be able to gain insights from this unstructured data in a way that helps me, you know, forward my business and understand where potentially improvements can be made. So lots of really cool stuff here built in. Do I need to understand how it's done, how to derive some? Think about how I would have done this two years ago, right? What I would have had to go through to do a sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, it's not necessarily easy. But there's lots of other changes that have come in. So Keith, what about the, what about, why don't you jump in here? Okay, I think one of the key parts of the 23 AI talk, uh, talk about Gen Dev, Gen AI, et cetera, is vector databases. How do I build them? How do I use them? Well, we're gonna look at the, how do I use them uh, fairly shortly. Marty's gonna talk us through some of that, but more importantly, how do I create these vectors without getting my hands dirty? without having to get the manuals out and try and understand all the new SQL commands that we put in there. Wouldn't it be great if I could go into a built-in tool and just drag a widget and drop it on a canvas and build a workflow? And that's exactly what we've done. Yeah. So we've taken the data transforms tool that you hopefully all know and love uh, as part of the pre-built widgets in the canvas there. If you look on the machine learning section, there's now to do the options there to do vector embedding straight away. So if I mm. want to start leveraging all of these new features in 23AI, uh, where you can build the 23AI uh, autonomous databases today, um, you can come in here and visually declaratively design that vector processing, that vector workflow to create the vectors that's going to drive uh, a lot of the stuff that Marty's going to talk about in a, a minute uh, around using generative AI to do natural language queries. So including, really nice. what is Again, a including what is a vector. <laughs> including what is a vector. So I don't need to, I don't need to know what a vector is here. I don't need to know the code to do it. I can just drag a widget, drop it on my canvas, string them together and away I go. Um, as Marty said, you know, I, we've done a lot of work around Gen AI that you saw uh, in the previous example that Marty was doing a data loading. When I come to a table, I can, as part of the data loading process, I can start having got my data loaded, start to be able to look at the information I've loaded. Maybe I could do with adding some more columns in there, maybe to get some more insight, particularly you know when we start to get into things like machine learning. If I've got a date, it's not particularly helpful, but if I can get the day from the year or the month from the day and so on, um, that's giving me more information. And, and this mm. is sort of Marcus's area, <laughs> machine learning, et cetera. But now, in the similar way that I can ask queries in natural language, as Marty was showing us earlier, I can now ask uh, the data as AI assist tool here to generate the SQL for me to do the manipulation on my table to give me the information that I need. So it will auto generate the SQL for me. So I can even generate new columns like discounts, um, et cetera. I can put information in about days, but I don't have to worry about the SQL here. I just need to know in natural language what it is that I want to do, type it into the box, and the AI assist tool is going to take over and implement all of that code for me. Very simply, very quickly, very easily. Um, so again, uh, at Cloudworld, we had some great sessions from Alexi and Giant that covered all of the stuff that, that we've just been through. Um, you can download the presentation from the link. And if we can ask Marcus to do a cut and paste, that would be really useful. Yep. 
thank you thank you i'm putting all the links that uh, you guys are talking about uh, <laughs> to everyone in the chat so if you guys want right. to check the links out uh, they're all there perfect thank you marcus okay marty yeah so you know um I, I'm I'm kind of espousing on the greatness of AI, right? Because it is pretty amazing. And the results that you get from these models is remarkable, right? Creative, it's innovative. It understands your voice. You know, um, you can have all this personalized messaging, but there's also the challenge, right? Where they do have their limits because they don't know anything about your data. Uh, they're not trained on your data. They're oftentimes frozen in time. So there are limits to them. And, and so... This is, you know, we were just talking about vectors and how we create them. But may, hey, what for those of you who don't know what is a vector, right? This is kind of a huge innovation, right? And the innovation with a vector is you're basically indexing documents and images and whatnot based on their semantic meaning, right? Which is really, really interesting. Um, so, you know, you, you might have a, a, a document and we're going to go through um, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that because I'm, I'm going to have a demo that's going to kind of give this in a lot more detail. But, but a vector is, is a way of applying a semantic to your data and then being able to do a similarity search based on that, right? I want to, now that I've, here I have a, someone riding a bike and they're wearing a rainbow uh, jacket you can then say, hey, let me find all um, bike riders with who love rainbows, right? And, and you know, it's going to be able to take this semantic, pull it from, pulling it from the image in this case, and then uh, say, ah, this is kind of similar to that. Or maybe you're going to do a similarity search based on two different pictures. Or we're going to be looking at a support site, right, where we're going to be asking questions around, on support. Now... This is all really interesting. And what we've done with Select AI and the big announcement that we have. So, so vector support and being able to, to do this similarity search in 23A is new to 23AI. Um, the ability to um, create the vectors and to do the similarity search, we've done a lot of work in Select AI to dramatically simplify that, right? So to automate the creation and managing of a vector from a knowledge base, Right, so you have in this case our support site, and I'm going to create indices on top of that support site, and then the process of doing the retrieval augmented generation. And at a high level, a user asks a question in English or Chinese or whatever language it is. That question gets encoded, right, and a similarity search takes place and says, "Hey, what documents are similar?" to the question that that person just asked. I'm going to take that information, and this is what we call RAG, that extra information that's just in our knowledge base, add that to the question that was asked, in this case, my Roku is stuck on the opening scene of the movie, pass it to the model. So now the model knows about your knowledge base, and it knows that it can now take what it knows, augmented by what you provided it that it doesn't know about, and produces an answer. This is here, let's take a look at a, a, a two minute demo of what we've done with Select AI to automate this. And this is, we have a YouTube video here as well, um, but it's it's exceedingly cool. So let's, let's take a look. Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is a way of improving a large language model's ability to accurately answer questions, especially when those answers require information that is held privately within an organization. Let's see how Autonomous Database makes it easier to create RAG-based apps. Every organization has knowledge bases to support different parts of the business. Oracle MovieStream is no different. It has an internal website used by support teams to answer technical questions from customers. Recently, MovieStream deployed a chatbot to help its customers get answers instantly. Like, my movie is stuck. Or, George Clooney's lips are moving, but I can't hear him. The chatbot gives relevant answers based on information in the knowledge base. 
So what's the magic? How is this app built? It starts with a new capability built into Oracle Database 23 AI called an AI vector. The movie stream knowledge base was indexed, capturing the semantics behind the content. When a question is asked, vector search finds the relevant content based on a similarity ranking. It's not a simple text comparison search, it is a semantic search, a much more powerful way of finding relevant information. Here's what the full process looks like. Your question is encoded as a vector and sent to AI Vector Search. AI Vector Search then finds relevant documents, and those documents are then sent to Gen AI along with your question. In other words, your question has been augmented with content from the customer support knowledge base. Gen AI then uses that relevant support information plus general knowledge to provide an informed answer to the user. This may sound complex. Turns out that Select AI simplifies the entire process. Let's take a look at the code. The process is all declarative. First, create an AI profile that's used to process natural language queries. Then, create a vector index whose source is the website whose files are in the object store. Creating the vector index kicked off a pipeline that populated the index from the object store files. The pipeline process completed. And you can now start asking questions using SQL and Select AI. Here we're saying that my Roku is stuck on the opening scene. The response is clear. There isn't specific details in the knowledge base about the Roku, but it does provide general information about restarting the player, checking your internet connection, and other helpful tips. The response also points to the source of the content. Notice even though the support page has no reference to a Roku, it knows that a Roku is a video player, and it's stuck on the opening scene is similar to the video freezing. As you can see, this is a semantic search, not a simple text search. It's incredibly powerful. So for more information, go to the Getting Started page for Autonomous Database. You'll find pointers to great blogs, demos, hands-on workshops, and more. I kind of find that amazing. <laughs> I got to say, <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's lots of more information that just, just as the others, we had multiple, lots of sessions on, um, on AI. So here you can, you can see, uh, and again, Marcos is going to pass this in, in the chat. Yeah, and, and we already got a lot of great reactions through, uh, ah. through Zoom, <laughs> lots of little hearts it's, and, uh, and uh, applauses. So that's great. It's so cool. It's, yeah, it's so cool. So Keith, uh, there's more. Wait, wait, there's there more. There is more. Wait, there Keith, more. go. And I have to thank Pablo uh, in the Q&A for teeing this one up. Uh, which is uh, my suggestion for the next session is to mix vector and graph. So that's what we've done. We have graph rag. And again, um, we've integrated this into the built-in graph studio. So you do this, you build out these graph rag uh, components with no code. Again, it's all declarative. And what graph brings to the game is more nuance. How are things related? So a good example for this, Marty, might be if we go back to your example, let's say we're in marketing and we want a Gen AI platform to generate a nice email for us. We might use Graph to understand how the people who are going to receive that might be interrelated. Do they know each other? Do they watch the same types of movies and so on? Graph is the platform, the environment that can tell us how things are interrelated to it. So we can now inject all that additional nuance and richness into my natural language queries and get much, much smarter results coming out of the end of it, which is perfect. And again, uh, you know, hopefully people are exploring graph today. But if not, again, at Cloud Worlds, we had 
there's quite a few sessions on graph, uh, yeah. most of them done by Melly, uh, who probably most of you know. Um, she's part of the product management team for graph. So there's one on graph rag, um, and then there's uh, a basic one on, you know, what does graph bring to SQL queries? The idea of connectedness. So you, again, you can download these sessions um, and we'll get those links into uh, into the chat for you. So those are kind of all the bits that we we put into the, the product. How, as a developer, can you quickly and easily pick up these things and get going? So as of today, we've got like ADB always free. Uh, you all probably know about this. Uh, as an environment, there are certain restrictions, et cetera. Um, and a lot of people have asked, could we have like a developer-centric environment? So that's what we've done in Autonomous Database today. So if you go today onto the console and you go to deploy a database, you'll see there's a new little switch uh, next to Always Free, which says, give me a developer instance. So what does that give you? It gives you a fixed shape, a bit like Always Free, um, but it has a cost associated with it but it comes with all of the tools that you would expect uh, in a fully paid instance. And most importantly for developers, it is fully supported. Yeah, it seems like it's just really inexpensive. And then yeah. you can have as many of these on your, on your uh, like always free yep. limited to just a couple, right? Yep. Here for developers, you can have as many as you need. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And of course, you've also had the container image so for those people who would kind of want to work on their laptop, kind of disconnected uh, mode, again, we've had the ADB free container for a while. It's very popular. Uh, a lot of people are working with it. Um, but again, we've taken that container image and, and kind of brought it up into a more developer-centric model. So again, you'll be able to run offline. Um, it's going to have the same pricing as the ADB in the cloud for developers. Um, but it's going to have a lot more functionality. So it's going to be able to go and refresh um, the database from the cloud and bring and push information. And most importantly, again, from a developer perspective, you're going to be fully supported. So this is kind of our, our support for driving that gen dev generative AI environment from a developer perspective. Marty, marketplaces. Yeah, well, you know, data. so as a developer, right, I can't tell you one of the big challenges I always have is getting data, right? And uh, and there's lots of, you know, every project, I feel like we get stuck with that. Hey, where do we get data? And this is where a data marketplace, and we now have what's called a data marketplace in autonomous database that makes it really easy to publish data sets and, and, and share those data sets securely. Right. So basically, um, as an author, I I can publish um, information, my tables or multiple tables to to the marketplace. And then as the consumer, if I've been given rights, because it's using IAM policies, it's going to say, I'm going to share this data set across my region, across my tenancy within this compartment. Right. So I'm, uh, that data is now shared. And then as the consumer, I just see it and I don't even know where it's coming from. I just access it. I just query it without having to worry about how to necessarily integrate it. If I want to load the data, I can. And that's what's really cool, um, especially as a developer. So I can start mucking around with it once I pull it in. And there's lots of other use cases beyond development, but that's one really great use case. But the other thing is, all right, well, maybe there's some data that I shouldn't have access to and it's not shared, right? Like I want to have data that might be contained personally identifiable information. Like they're not going to give me customer details. They're not going to give me customer behavior. So I want to generate that data synthetically with really creatively. And that's where we have uh, in Select AI, this new capability to do synthetic data generation. So let's take a look at how these two things can kind of come together, right? So in my scenario, like as I feel like I'm always in this scenario, I'm going to go shopping at the marketplace. I'm going to pull in some data sets. 
But then there's some other data sets that I need, as I mentioned, for customers and for behavior that I'm going to generate synthetically. So let's see how that's done. So first, I'm, I'm starting, and, and you know, I, I, the, the setup was there. I'm in the SQL worksheet. I don't have access to anything. There's no, I have no tables yet. So within Data Studio, I'm going to go to the data marketplace. And in the data marketplace, I'm seeing all of the data sets that have been shared with me. So I can go look at, let's say, movies, right? And in the movies, uh, you know, I'll, I'll query it, and I'm looking at the data. And you'll notice I'm not loading the data. Frankly, I don't even know where this data came from. It was published. I'm using what's called a cloud link. And cloud links have been available in autonomous database for some time. We're kind of using that as a core technology for the marketplace. So I'm just now querying my cloud link, my, my movies, right? And I can see them here. Where'd they come from? Not sure, right? All I know is I can now look at movies. And of course, I have genres too, you know, so I can look at my genres. In this case, I'm going to load it though. I'm going to go back and because I'm going to be doing development, I don't want to query that directly. I'm going to be mucking around with this stuff. So I'm going to pull it into my own database, right? So um, I'm now going to load my actor data, my genre data, et cetera, into, into my database. Awesome. And guess what? It loaded perfectly. I uh, got my genres there. Terrific. Well, now I'm going to jump into, uh, I'm going to jump into, VS Code, which has amazing plugins for connecting to the database and writing apps, right? So here's the genres that uh, that were loaded, and you can see them here. Uh, my movies loaded perfectly. That's awesome. But what I don't have, if I look at my customers, I need to generate that, right? So I'm going to use AI to generate that. And to help generate good synthetic data, I'm actually going to apply hints. Like here's some rules for years as a, as a customer, the number should be one to eight. The age range, I want it to be silent generation, baby boomer, Gen X, et cetera. And, and for my genders, uh, male, female, and non-binary. Non for my streams, I'm going to do something similar, right? I want these date ranges. Here's other possible values. But you'll notice also I have movie ID, cust ID. These are foreign keys, right? So it's going to be accurate in terms of the data generation, where once the uh, the customers, for example, have been generated, in the fact table, rel you know, valid customer IDs will be used, and the valid movie IDs will also be used. Those were the ones that came in from the marketplace. So it's really, really simple. Basically, it's an API call. I say, these are the tables I want to generate. You know. Uh, and a shelf customer for a shelf. You think about the shelf as being a Netflix. You have you know all of your different shelves like um, your genres or what's what's trending. You specify things like your record record counts and whatnot. You run it. You have your the data is generated, and after it's generated, <laughs> of course you're going to use select AI right to say hey let's look at the shelves. Let's uh, look at total sales and discounts by age. Right. Uh, and and meanwhile, discounts is actually applying some math to, to create that, right? Where it's it's got to take taking a discount percent, multi multiplying that by uh your sales, et cetera. And here's what the streams table looks like, right? Again, this is a pain, <laughs> right? That we've just removed. When you want to build apps, we're just making it easier, right? And and Accessing real data, generating synthetic data is, is dramatically simpler. Mark has a great blog post on this that you can take a look at. And Marcos wrote a terrific blog post as well on um, the developer uh, options. So Marcos, you want to jump in? And I think we're going to be winding down with these, these final thoughts here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Other to... <laughs> great stuff. Doesn't end. We are almost at the, at the end here, guys. Uh... But one last thing um, that I think it's is pretty interesting that we have uh, brought into the Oracle machine learning world, which is extending your, you know, bring your own model, right? So we've been doing R for more than a decade, right? Where you can bring your own code and Python for a long while as well, maybe more than six, seven years. So um, 
Now we're adding, uh, you know, the Onyx runtime inside the database. So that actually opens up new capabilities, right? So bringing not only Onyx uh, models, but also we have, you know, specific hugging face models, right? That are open source that you can bring in. We can transform their, uh, them, right? With the proper format and then run those guys inside the database, right? So um, a quick example uh, shows you guys some as simple, you know, as simple as the code allows you to do, right? Is how to, for example, bring in that transformed and converted model, right? From hugging face, that's a transformer model. We converted that into an Onyx format, right? We give you that tool ourselves. We have that in already in, in the OML side. And then we can import that model and we can use that model uh, internally, right? To do all of the uh, uh, process for, uh, for, you know, creating vectors, right? Out of that. And then uh, in the next slide, uh, we are talking about GPUs here. So uh, enabling GPUs, for now, you know, at the, at the initial stages, we are allowing you to use uh, GPUs when you have uh, when you're using Python, right? So our Oracle Machine Learning for Python, the Python API for the in database uh, algorithms and and the Python processing there, right? In Oracle Machine Learning, when you run on that, um, it's just you know, as soon as you click on that GPU, there are some uh, basic uh, requirements: uh, 16 eCPU. Uh, 88, you know, autonomous database, and then you're going to be able to just use GPUs for, for now, these uh, um, models are come in Python. Uh, coming soon, we're going to actually extend that to using GPUs for the Onyx uh, format as well, right? Um, so those are some of the very cool things. We, uh, uh, we did two sessions where Mark did a session on choosing the right AI capabilities uh, in Database 23 AI. And um, we did together a session on uh, bring your own uh, model to uh, autonomous database. And uh, I'm putting the links uh, right now uh, in chat uh, as well for you guys. And uh, I think that that's it on, on my side. We're, we're running uh, real short. So Marty, why don't you uh, close our session? And in the meantime, I'm sending guys uh, the poll. So hopefully you guys uh, um, appreciated that. Yeah, I thanks thanks Mark cuz I you know there's so we it was kind of a whirlwind of capabilities that we went through but the overlying the underlying th the theme across them all is how does gendev and how does um our, your ability to run anywhere right across all of the hyperscalers make it easier for you to build high value applications really really simply and you know, this helps developer teams where, you know, you can build, build your apps more intelligent apps more quickly and easily for business teams. When you want to, um, you know, uh, use the self-service tools and just start taking advantage of, uh, these capabilities, like we saw for, you know, integrating new data sets and being able to derive things like sentiment and key phrases really, really simply. So it kind of lowers the bar in terms of being able to take advantage of these advanced capabilities. And of course, for IT teams, you know, you get this great value prop from ADB that you've always had, right? You, you focus on, you know, you, you can now focus on building robust apps and lower, dramatically lower the cost for maintaining and, and, and delivering these solutions, right? And keeping all of your data secure. So Marcos had, you know, is putting tons of stuff in the chat in terms of links. You can grab these uh, QR codes and uh, take you to our getting started page. And Keith, of course, every year does the review of everything on autonomous and everything on cloud. It's a, a remarkable thing that he's able to do every year. <sighs> We're at the top of the hour. So I, I don't know if we have time for questions anymore, but here's again, some other important links to, to, to bookmark. So, you know, you know, thank you everybody for, for joining. Um, thank you. Yeah. I just, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. Thank you, Maria and, and, and Keith. It was, it was an amazing session. So guys, uh, we'll leave the Q and a open for, for a little while more. Um, so if you guys want to jump in and type your question, uh, we have answered the several questions already a lot. Um, but 
you know, keep keep them coming. Uh, and then, as Marty said, uh, you know, the links that uh, he was showing, uh, I'm putting them right now in chat as well. Go ahead. There you go. Uh, and then uh, one last uh, important message we got here. Upcoming sessions, we're going to talk to them and show them over here in that link. Um, on the top, we have some special links for you guys. And in the bottom, we have all the replays of the previous sessions, okay? So next week, we have a very uh, cool session. It's not going to be the learning lounge session, okay? It's a, it's, it, it's a different environment, but Marty's going to be talking about Gen AI and autonomous database. So he's going to dive deeper into the Gen AI portion that today he was able to just do a section on it, right? And, and that's going to be uh, in, in the, called the, the supercharger apps with Gen AI and autonomous database. So uh, I will uh, be linking to this session and I'm going to be talking about this session and sending you guys information about how to join, but you need to register in that link um, that is shown there, okay? Um, all right, I think that's it. Again, thank you guys for joining. I uh, really appreciate it. I will leave uh, this uh, open, right, uh, for a few more minutes while we finish here and, and we, we take the last questions. And again, thank you for joining and thank you, Marty, and thank you, Keith, really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Yep, thank you. Have a good day.